Hey y'all, it is Andrea here at VW Family Farm. Welcome into my kitchen. It is a Saturday here, so that is the day I start preparing things for the next week and just getting a plan together on uh, like our food and, and how all that's gonna go. And I got to thinking, I've had a lot of questions about uh, something I showed you on a past video. I showed you my Azure Standard Haul and things I bought from them. And one of the things I had bought in my last order a few months ago was the Bread for Life Sourdough Starter. So if you've been around here a while, you know I have done a lot with sourdough. I have an entire sourdough playlist here on our channel. I started my own sourdough starter from scratch and got it going and kept it going for years. But it just got to the point I had neglected it and neglected it, which you can do and it will survive usually and bounce back. But I had just kind of damaged it enough that it just wasn't making the best bread ever. And I saw this starter on Azure's website and I thought, you know what, why not? I'm gonna give it a try. So I've had a lot of questions because some of you, you don't want to make your own, you don't have time, or you're ready to break, bake bread now, and when you f make your own starter, it's not necessarily ready right away to bake with. So um, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna tell you how I liked it, and I'm gonna show you um, the bread recipe they provided, and I'm gonna show you how that turns out, show you exactly how to do it. All of it, once you purchase the starter from them, and even before you purchase the starter from them on their website, which there's a link below to Azure Standard, and I believe it is the owner of Azure Standard, his family, they've made, they, I believe it made this starter, and they made a video telling you how to make the starter if you're starting it from scratch on your own how to turn that into how to feed it and maintain it and then how to turn that into everything from bread to dinner rolls and hamburger buns pizza crust caramel rolls cinnamon rolls um just anything and everything you can think of there is a ton of free recipes in this resource and so a lot of the information is actually in print form underneath where you would purchase this starter and there's also a link to the video there all of it is free i believe they even have instructions under where to purchase this starter if you wanted to just start your own starter i think you could do that but this starter i was very interested in and then we're going to get to it here in just a second but i wanted to mention this um it has there's different types of wild yeast that's what you're doing when you're starting your own sourdough starter you're capturing wild yeast basically from your environment and you're getting good bacteria growing in your sourdough starter and you're creating your own yeast um, and so there's different types of those you can capture and one of the things on their description said that what this is made of makes a sweeter, not as sour loaf of bread. And that's one thing my family is not crazy about when it gets really sour. So I was interested in that. I'll give you more on that later, but I did just want to mention that if you are a little hesitant on the sourdough, the sour part of the sourdough, um, this might be something you want to consider. So anyway, you can see I've had this going for a while. I've got a lot in here. I need to discard, but that's what we're going to do today. We're going to make bread. So it started out in a pint jar, which holds two cups, and it probably had half a cup in it when it came in to me. It was in a glass jar. Um, and so you're going to start feeding that. You're going to feed small amounts at first, and there's, there's directions on how to do that when you purchase that, or even if you just want to go look at it on their website and make your own so you're gonna start with I'm gonna say like a four third of a cup of flour and water and um, you're gonna start that way feeding it every single day now this is a refrigerated starter so this is gonna stay in your fridge some some starters stay out on your counter all the time this is not one of those this is refrigerated so you're gonna get it out you're gonna feed it while it's still cold you're gonna put the lid back on and you're gonna pop it back in the fridge and it is going to um, rise and do its thing in the fridge that was so crazy to me because I've never had one like that before but when you get up to the point where I'm at and you have a lot and you've been doing it for a week or two you're gonna build up as you start to feed it you don't even have to discard every time with it with this starter um, so I got to the point I was feeding a cup of flour a cup of water and so you can see this is a half gallon I've got at least a quart of starter here 
So we are going to make a loaf of bread today. I've even got enough in here if I wanted to make two loaves of bread, but I'm just going to stick with one. But you can see not discarding and continuing to feed. You can get enough to where you could really do some batch baking if you wanted to. Um, and so we need a cup of this starter. We're going to get that measured out and we're going to get our other ingredients measured out and in the mixer. So that is our four ingredients. I'm gonna let those start mixing. I'm gonna put this dough hook on there. Um, I'm doing this in my KitchenAid mixer. You can do this by hand. You can do it in a different type of mixer. But if you have something like this and you've always wondered what that is, that is a dough hook. This is literally a bread maker's best friend. At least it is mine. Uh, it's going to kind of start mixing this and then when it gets all incorporated together I'm going to use this to actually knead the bread and kneading the bread sourdough or regular or whatever is very important I have made lots of loaves of sourdough that when my family went to make a sandwich out of it it would not even hold together it was so crumbly that's because I under kneaded it it makes a dense flat loaf and then, or another symptom of that, it could be very crumbly when you get done, just will not hold together. Um, a lot of people are afraid of gluten these days, and with good reason. There's people with gluten allergies and different things like that. But if you are not, and if you are using regular wheat flour to bake with, which involves gluten, you have to get that gluten activated. There's different levels of gluten in different flours, like bread flour has a higher gluten level and you want to get those activated because that's what's going to give you a good loaf of bread that is not going to crumble on you that's not going to be super dense and just heavy it's going to make you a good nice light loaf of bread if you need the proper amount of time so in this recipe we're going to need for five minutes that's important we don't want to do like two and call it good just because it looks mixed up and i'm going to also show you as we do this the different stages of kneading even in the mixer now if you were going to do this by hand you absolutely Absolutely can a couple things to consider if you're gonna do it by hand it's gonna take longer and number two you're probably going to be using flour to knead into it and that can affect your recipe and that can affect your final result as well so just keep those things in mind so while that is just starting to get mixed up it's not kneading yet we're gonna go ahead and feed this starter so I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna give it about half a cup because I just want to give it something to kind of thrive on and then I'm going to pop it back in the fridge and then maybe tomorrow I might make another loaf of bread with it and use some of this up. So I just used equal parts flour and water and if you look down in this jar, you might think it looks dirty. To me, I call it beautiful. It is. Um, a lot of people will change their jar all the time. That's not me. I have been doing sourdough for years and that's just the way I was taught is once you get a good environment going in there, you scrape the sides down um, and just keep going with it because you've got a good bacteria environment going in there and I don't want to mess it up. Now, if this gets much dirtier, I probably will change jars. It's not that I never do. It's just I don't do it every single time. So one thing I like about this recipe a lot, every time I've made it, it doesn't take that long in the mixer to start mixing. So if you are doing this with a different recipe, there's about four stages, I guess, of kneading that you need to watch for or, or of mixing slash kneading. So stage one, we're already past it in the mixer or else I would show you but your dough is going to look kind of like batter it's going to be it's not going to have any form or shape and it's going to be kind of stuck all to the sides of your bowl and then it's going to go through it's still going to look kind of batterish like tacky-ish if, if you will and it's not going to look smooth on the outside but it's going to start to pull away from the sides of the bowl and start to form um, like one big shape and then finally it's going to start to all pull away it's almost going to leave your bowl clean and it's going to be all in one big clump if you will and you're going to be kneading at that point so we are going to turn this on medium low and let it knead for about four or five minutes all right
right, so we got it kneaded. This is a very simple loaf of bread, but it's a super good sourdough. I'm actually gonna put it in this bread bowl. Let me show you what it looks like. It's gonna be really cool. So this is actually, this is what this is for, is for proofing bread or letting it rise. So we're gonna put it in here. I've got it oiled really good. We're gonna put it in there and then we're gonna flip it over. And then this actually comes with this cloth cover. I'm gonna put that on there. Let it rise for about six hours in a warm spot. So I'll see you guys back in about six hours. One last thing I wanna mention while I'm thinking about it while we wait on this bread to rise is, if you want this to work out like say 6 p.m. Um, for you to bake for your supper or your dinner or whatever you call it, you would probably wanna start this about mid-morning, nine or 10 o'clock in the morning, so you have plenty of time for it to rise and then it's gonna do a second rise as well. So just wanted to throw that out there if you're kind of wanting to time it out. One thing about sourdough is just make it work for you. It's, it's flexible and forgiving and it's supposed to be fun and enjoyable. It's not supposed to be a chore. So just work it into your life. All right, y'all, so it has been six hours um, and one little trick that I learned when making yogurt and it works pretty good with bread too is I wind up sticking this in the oven and just turning the oven light on to create just a little bit of warmth in there and it worked beautifully. So you can see that rose really well. It, it needed to double and it definitely did. So at this point, you would want to shape it into a loaf and put it like in a loaf pan. This is my favorite one. It's a cast iron pan. So I would want to kind of shape it into this rectangle kind of oblong shape and put it in there. And as you do that, you're going to kind of you're going to kind of mess it up a little bit, deflate it just a little bit. And that's why you're going to leave it another couple of hours and let it rise up and kind of get rose up out of this pan. And then you're going to bake it. But I'm actually not going to use this pan. I'm going to put it back up. And I am going to try to gently put this out just onto a cookie sheet. Um, I'm going to bake a round loaf. I really like round loaves of sourdough. I'm going to give this a try and I'm going to let it rise for probably about an hour, but I'm not going to probably give it the full two hours because uh, I'm not going to just totally flatten it out at this point. To me, that really looks cool. I'm going to let it rise for a little bit and then I'm going to slash some designs in it. We're going to bake it. We're going to bake it at 325 for 40 minutes. So I'm going to let this kind of rest, get my oven heating, bake it, and show you what it looks like. All right, so we are ready to bake it. A very important tip at this point is you want to score your sourdough. You might be thinking people just do that to be artistic and pretty. And while it is pretty and it is artistic, there is a reason to it. There's several reasons actually. So if you remember back earlier in the video, I told you we had to get the gluten activated and we had to really work and knead that bread to activate and make the gluten work so we didn't have just a crumbled up mess at the end. Well, if you did that properly, Probably at this point, I'm gonna show you my bread and explain to you what I'm talking about. So you can see this almost has like a shell on it at this point. That's because the gluten really got activated. We really worked this bread well, but if it starts baking, it really has nowhere to go to expand. You can see it's already kind of started scoring itself. You need to score it to create like a weak point so that it has room to expand. And that's how you're gonna get those holes that you get in sourdough that you buy, um, is by scoring it and letting the steam escape and letting it have that weak point so that it can expand. So there's actually special tools to do this. I don't have those, so I'm gonna use a knife to do this. And then as soon as you score it, you wanna get it into the oven as fast as possible because yes, you've created a weak point, which is good, but it's also, it's you're on a clock now because you've also created a weak point to where your bread can start to deflate. So we're gonna score it. I'm just gonna do the traditional cross design and then we are gonna pop this thing in the oven for 40 minutes at 325.
So it is done, but I'm gonna broil it for just a couple minutes just to brown the top, and I think it's gonna be perfect. Oh, that looks perfect. I love it. All right, it looks perfect. I'm gonna let this cool, and then I'm probably gonna make some toast in the morning. It is like eight o'clock at night, so that'll be perfect, and we will let you know how it tastes. Good morning, y'all. So it is the next morning. We are gonna take the sourdough, slice it up. I'm gonna make some gravy and make breakfast for the family and taste this bread out. So let's get to it. So I did not have a bag big enough for this. I'd love to know you guys who bake these round loaves, what do you put them in after that? So I just wrapped it in a towel last night to cool because bread will kind of sweat as it cools and then that can kind of cause it to mold faster if you put hot bread in a bag. So I just did that. I'm gonna slice them off and then hopefully it's gonna fit in a bag after that. So, um, but leave that down below if you have a suggestion. So this bread actually turns out pretty soft in the middle and then it's got a crunchier outside. So if you like bread like that, that's how I like bread. That's how I like sourdough. And you can see like this right here is where we had slashed the top and it started to rise and make um, kind of a hole in there. I kind of like to feed this starter more and get more of that going, get more of the big holes in the bread that i like that um for sourdough that's how i prefer it it's really light and airy in the middle so i'd like to encourage that even more but overall i would say i'm really happy with this starter so that was the number one question i've been asked is how is that starter working for you and i would a hundred percent recommend the bread for life starter so um i wouldn't hesitate at all it pretty much came ready to bake I did have to feed it just a couple times because it had been in shipping, but other than that, it's been ready to make bread from the get-go. It's alive and active when you receive it, so I would definitely recommend that. I also like their bread recipe. This is pretty simple and straightforward. You can start it in the morning and have bread by supper time. Um, you could do it like overnight and have bread the next morning. You could work it into your schedule, so I really like their recipe, and like I said, the starter comes with a video with all kinds of instructions and recipes you can incorporate into your daily baking or your weekly baking or whatever. So we're going to toast some of this up, try it, and then wrap this video up. Let's do the taste test. It's good. I know everybody says that on videos, but this bread really is good. It's not too sour, which I told you earlier in the video, my family just doesn't like. That's kind of turned us off to sourdough in the past. And um, I can do a lot of things just because I get into like, food trends and healthy foods and fixing things and just I like to cook and all those things but my family's main motivator just to be honest with y'all is taste and so that's kind of why they haven't liked sourdough in the past this bread does produce a milder loaf so I really like that so I'll probably stick with this for a while if I ever fool around and let it die I probably will in the future try to make my own again but this was just too easy it was it's not expensive and 
then you have your own starter and you can just start baking because when I made my own it it just took a while to get it to where I could bake with it so anyway that's my honest review of the bread for life starter y'all have been asking and um I don't I don't this is not some sort of like promotion I don't get anything for telling you guys this this is just literally y'all been asking and I wanted to give you an update so I'm gonna actually try to commit to start baking with this and do better because I kind of fell into a habit the last year or so life just got busy that I just buy a lot of things again and that was not our motivation for starting this farm and homestead was to be buying a lot of things at the store so anyway we're about to eat breakfast we'll see you guys on the next one thanks for watching and god bless oh i forgot there's always a link below to azure standard if you're interested in this starter um, it's just called the bread for life starter and it's on there you can get it anytime you can pick up from them they do once a month drops that's how i buy the bulk of our groceries but you can also have stuff shipped directly to your door if you're not interested in meeting a truck and picking up for them costs a little more to have it shipped to your house but you can do that see you guys later the gravy's about done look how good that looks and it will thicken as it cools too so i always want to stop a little bit before it's completely as thick as i want we're gonna make ben try it you gotta do the taste test oh yeah yeah you know how y'all are kind of picky about sourdough mm -hmm. Okay. Give it a try. Sourness, softness of the bread, all the things. I just did that because every time somebody takes a bite, they're always doing, mmm, yeah. Mm. Uh, no, it, it, it's good. It's a lot better than most sourdoughs that and don't have that wing afterwards. What about the softness and the texture? Describe it, it for us. It is soft. It does not just crumble all over the place. Um, That's been one of your biggest complaints. Mm -hmm. mm. How's the crunch? I like the hard, crusty shell on the outside. So is this, a, you'd like this again? Yes, definitely. Definitely a keeper. What are you doing? I am building an email for all of our customers. Um, if you're not signed up, you can go to our website vwfamilyfarm.com sign up for our monthly emails i am actually sending out one for 10 percent off this month so we have not done anything with our bulk email service up to this point and we apologize if you've been getting junk emails from us that have just been a generic recurring email and that has made you unsubscribe we apologize we are going to do so much better i'm going to start sending out like discount codes and updates on our inventory and all kinds of stuff at the most once a week maybe once a month not sure yet but just wanted to throw that out there that is something it's taken a long time to get this business off the ground and we've neglected some things and the email is one of them so i apologize if you've got any junk email from us hopefully that is ending now see you guys later